So here's the O'Connell Street Monument. It is really nice inside there. So here I am at the spire. Goes all the way up. Dial that. Special request. And look at the water. I don't know if you can see it through the water yet. There's like swords and shields. Morning, everyone. Wednesday morning, 8th of February, just a turning seven o'clock. I decided to uh, light two candles with one match, meaning I have to go for my annual checkup with my urologist. So I decided I'll bring my little GoPro, and you guys are on, to go up to Dublin. And we'll walk around, see what Dublin has to offer. They have a Nepalese um, restaurant in Dublin so I think we might try to get a sample of that okay so I just got off the bus that's the Wexford bus the silver yoke there and you drop you off on the customs house on the quay in Dublin now I have about an hour an hour and 45 minutes till I have to get to my appointment so what we're gonna do is walk around Dublin now Dublin's a huge city we won't cover one tenth of it or even a hundredth of it today but it's just to give you a little idea what Dublin looks like and the architecture and the goings and hustle and bustles on a weekday in Dublin City but this is a customs house on the quay see the fine building up there right now the first port of call is to find a place to have a cup of coffee um, you know because of the long trip I didn't really want to drink before because you're on the bus for about uh, two and a half, three hours till you get to Dublin. So now I'm just going to find myself somewhere to have a coffee. And then just off the quay, walking up, here's a statue of James Conley, one of the Irish leaders and a real uh, labor man, the start of the Irish labor. And of course, he was one of the martyrs. 1916. No! Get up, you get up! To our side. Fire! Nice big statue there of him. There's a nice statue right beside the Irish Life building with the water fountain and water feature. National Lottery building. That's when a lot of people walking out of there with big fat checks if they win the, the lotto. That's where you come to collect. As yeah, so we're walking down this main road there, I've seen this Wins Hotel. It's a fine old building. Just wanted to show that off. I like the way the uh, the sign is done with the stained glass. And there's a cafe near though, so we'll be going in there. So start off with this uh, statue here. Starbucks, Eddie Rockets, Burger Kings, Supermax. There's a ton of them right in this corner. So this is O'Connell Street, which is the main one in the city center. It goes right up to the spire. So here's the O'Connell Street monument. And you can see right at the top there's a pigeon. And then you see the spire right in the middle. The big metal thing that goes way up in the sky. This one is William Smith O'Brien. Sentenced to death for high treason on the 9th of October, 1848. Alright, coffee was sorted. Now we're walking up O'Connell Street again. Here's Sir John Gray. There's another statue we have here as we walk towards the spire. And here we're coming up to the statue of Jim Larkin. 1874 to 1947. Here's the GPO, the museum. This is the general post office where the 1916 rebellion was. Show me the ringleaders of this little farce. And uh, the final stand, that's where all your men were fighting off at the last minutes. And they eventually surrendered. And then you had the martyrs who signed the proclamation. They were all 
executed by the British at the time. So this is the GPO. And in the window there's a statue of Ku Cullen. So here's right by the spire. And the spire goes all the way up. You see it was right in front of the GPO. We've got uh, Starbucks, Mountain Warehouse. There's a train, the dirt. There it is coming by. So there's a lot of public transport you see in the city. Like it's not easy to drive around. There's a lot of Here I am at the spire. Goes all the way up. Here's a man selling flowers. This is Father Matthew, the Apostle. The iron store. So that's for iron wool, sweaters and stuff, which are very famous in Ireland. Different types of wools and jumpers and blankets, hats, gloves, teddy bears. Those are hop on buses so you can take a tour around the city. You can jump on and get off at different places. So they're available right here on O'Connell Street as well. Dr. Quirky's Good Time Emporium. There's a building under construction, but I like how they covered it with the, the sheet with the false front. Doesn't make it look as gaudy. Fortune Terrace Buffet. All you can eat for $10.99, Chinese buffet. Kebabs and pizzeria. Ned Kelly Sports Club. So casino. There's a nice mural on the side of the wall. It's a man. It's made up of... Not sure what they are. Yeah. It's Charles Stuart Parnell. That's the uh, monument. It's a nice big one. We'll make our way across this side towards the... Here's another big old building here. There's no real cars coming, so we'll cross over. So look at the... Lots of different things going on. Like your eyes are just going all over the place. Like I said, you can really come here and spend a lot of time. There's the back part of that monument. Here's the back of the uh, theater there. Gate Theater entrance here, too. Garden of Remembrance. Dedicated to those who gave their lives in the cause of Irish freedom. We walk in here. A few benches there. And on this side, And then you have the harp. I think that's something that's really true. I made Anthony Joshua drop his uh, belt to the green Just by eating sweets. Really this is very nice and well kept. Hey, look. And look at the water. I don't know if you can see it through the water yet. There's like swords and shields. It's very nice. Didn't know this was here. It's the shape of a cross, a big cross. They even have a lift available there. And then there's a big, huge sculptor there. Some more swords, shields. Very nice. It almost looks like you can swim in it. Lovely. Very well done. And then it comes up to this huge 
I wonder if that's supposed to be the children of, of Lear, this, the fable, children's fable. Because you have one, two, three, four swans. It's very nice. Very cool. And then overlooks the whole way. And then we'll head out this way. And we'll go down towards the church again. It's very well done. So this is called the Abbey Church. It's closed up. Don't get inside. There's a bunch of hotels and at the Castle Hotel. Barry's Hotel, the Belvedere Hotel. I think there's lots of them. There's a castle tea room. There's another church over there at the end. That looks nice, eh? Might walk that way. Go we'll across and see what that's all about. So we're walking our way towards the uh, church that's at the end here. There's a grotto. You have the Virgin Mary there. And this tree has some statues around it. It's well kept. And here's the church right in front of us now. There's the clock face on the front. The clock's not right though. Either that or lost. And it has Greek writing in front. I think it's Greek anyways. Or Roman, whatever. But I think it's Greek. We'll find out. See what the church is called. And there's the Matter Hospital. There's where I have to go for my appointment. So we're not too far. Let's see what it says. This building. I like the... Uh... So, Temple Street Children's University Hospital Foundation. So, it's repurposed, but... Uh... Look at the stone carvings. On this date, two years ago, is when I had my surgery for my prostate. Now, I was lucky because in hindsight, the, it was a random blood test that picked up a high PSA count. And then they ran another test a few weeks later and it jumped. Then I did a, had an MRI scan and then a biopsy. And they confirmed it was cancer and bang, it was so from October to February. And this was during the height of the uh, pandemic where elective surgeries were all cancelled. But because I was lucky enough to have private health care through my work, um, that they took care of that and I had the uh, surgery. Like, so we're very lucky because if I wouldn't have been able to have it, you don't know how much it could have spread. So, so this is where I was at for three days. Um, scary time getting surgery though. Although, in retrospect, everything went well. Okay, here's where we're just at the, a few neat, neat buildings. So here's a church to the left, there's a green area. And I want to show you if this building to the right. It looks like it's the old original Matter Hospital when it was founded. There's the hospital right there. 1852. It was founded on September 24th, 1852. You have a green area that's the Celtic Cross there. And then a figurine with that. Looks like a globe with the hands on it. We'll go up in there. We still have time. So this is the back part of the church. You can see the same glass through there. I don't. It's hard. I don't know if the GoPro picks it up because it's very dark. But I imagine with the sun on the outside beaming in on it. Saint Joseph's Church, Berkeley Road. So here's the church itself.
there's your man there. Here's another back garden way. Very nice. There's your man himself. Here I am making my way in to my appointment. Okay, so that's me done. Um, he said that I just have to do an annual blood test and as long as the PSA is zero, I don't have to go back because it's the two year anniversary. So that's good, I don't have to come back here unless something drastically happens. So, as we're walking down, here's Temple Street. So that's the old Temple Street Children's Hospital. They're in the building, process of making a new one now, which is already, it's the most expensive hospital ever, and it hasn't even been built yet. Speaking of expense, so I was in the office with the doctor for, I'd say about three and a half, four minutes. So I got the queen bill out and that, it only cost me 150 euros. Here's a neat little building. Established 1861. It says Leg, Leg Brothers. Thought it was just looking cool. Now, coming up to uh, an old church of some sort here, so that's why it popped it on. But I saw that place and it just jumped out at me and said, Hey, that was so neat. Let's see what this is up ahead. You have the uh, the lanterns for the Chinese New Year, I think. Hill Street Family Resource Center. Here, some sort of a Hill Street Playground. Let's take a look see. So, St. George Hill Street. Founded in 1714 by Archbishop King and Sir John Eichels. So it was established as a playground here, so. I didn't say much about the old building though, but it's cool looking. Chinese fast food walk. Here's another one. Jeez, that's not bad. Eight euros for these bowls of soup and that. Red beans milk smoothie. Seven euros. Mango milk smoothie, seven euros. Strawberry milk smoothie, seven euros. Red bean soup, eight. And then different stuff. Cool. There's another one, Noodle House. Give you the prices, it's all in Chinese. And then they have it in English beside it. So, there's the prices. Soup noodles are 9.80. Chow mein, 11.50. Noodles, 13 to 14 euros. Ham dishes, 13, 14. Pork, seafood. So. Walk away this way. Jojo's Chinese restaurant. There's all the menus there. Look. So I didn't know this existed. Here's another one. And some more. Karaoke rooms available. If you, know, you want to do the karaoke. Supermarket. And 
then her Chinese. And the Chinese Sichuan chili. And that's about it. So that's the little area. So if you want to come to Dublin, just look for that street. There's tons of uh, authentic Chinese restaurants. So it's on Parnell Street and George's Street, Great North. So we're right around the intersection of that. And you hit it. And there's the monument that we came across at, uh, you know, with the Parnell Stewart Monument. So if you continue on straight from uh, Connell Street, you'll get to it. There's a, an Asian food market here. Salam alaikum. Here's a little pub. Murray's Public House. Madigan's Bar or Pub. Kitchen open all day. Here's Cafe Nero, another one. Here's the tourist board, uh, tourist center, information center. So if you want to find out, it's on O'Connell Street. Just walking on this street and then I seen a statue of James Joyce. The author from Dublin. Just wanted to show you this little building. See the little skull, the, uh, the carvings and the, the, uh, the stone right by the permanent TSB. And there's another nice building right across called the uh, Grand Central Bar. Here's the river that runs through the city. The O'Connell Street Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big old Heineken building here. It's called the River Bar. Nice building here with the uh, Grim Reaper, Dracula, and Batman defending it. Interesting little look to it. We'll cross over here. <laughs> National Wax Museum's right there, so that's what the statues are probably for. There's a KFC right across it. The guards on the bike. Abigail's Backpackers in. Okay, what we're gonna do, this is get off the key a bit, walk up here to the Temple Bar area. Look at the murals on the side of the wall. Looks really nice. So this is a very touristy area of Dublin, the Temple Bar. So a lot of tourists come here now. The pints aren't really that great and they're really expensive. Just, but the ambiance and that, that's what they come here for. If you really want to see a true authentic pubs in Ireland, just make your way outside of the area. Go to the outskirts of the town, like even where we were. Go into those little bars, little pubs that you see the locals drinking in. You get a little better idea of, uh, you know, what it's like in an Irish pub. The old Dubliner. Elfin Castle. Well, they have one of these in Ottawa. I remember when I was in the army. We would always go on a Saturday afternoon, have a few in the Elfin Castle, before we went to Molly McGuire's pub where we used to always hang out with, with all the airborne guys. There's a nice little seat. Dublin Vintage Factory. Here's Badass Temple Bar. So here's a whole, like I said, you get the idea of the whole place. Temple Bar Takeout. Please Bar Restaurant.
That's nice looking. The outside, the way it's ceramic is done. Do you know anything about Temple Bar Trading Company. So I guess that's just for tourists and stuff to get souvenirs. Yeah. That's what it looks like. And there's a famous one, the uh, Temple Bar. That's really nice inside there. I've been in there myself a couple of times. Yeah. It is really nice inside there. It doesn't really look opened. Here's a nice old building. It's right on the corner of, uh, I think, Oliver Street and South Great George Street. See the old building. It's obviously repurposed that, but the brickwork is really nice. The archway is on top. So it's an old Dunn's coffee shop and that. And then right across the Wally Indian Nepalese cuisine. Oh, interesting. Didn't even know this one was here. See what they have. So there's a uh, Indian Nepalese cuisine, Diwali, and here's their menus. So vegetable makora is good, and this chana masala. So that's for $14.95 for two between 12:30 and 2:30 on Monday to Wednesday lunch menu, and they all come served with uh, uh, rice or plain naan. And then they have the the, uh, the main menu here for a la carte. So we'll probably go in there. I'm just going to walk back to the other one and see. Because the other one looked closed. But it looked like the exact same menu as I read when I was on the um, when I was on the, uh, the web page opening it up. Namaste. So I think it opens up at 1 o'clock. So... Well, I waited for the uh, place to open up. I just seen that I was right beside Dublin Castle. And this is run by the OPW, so there's guided tours and stuff. But I figured, like, it's just down the alleyway from where we were. You see, there's the cornerstone of it. So I figured I'll pop by and walk here as far as I can go in. Without paying, that is. And then you can see inside there. They're having some photo shoot. No guided tours beyond this point. If I'm not a guided tour, can I walk in? Let's chance arm. Just take a look at it quickly. So there's Inside Dublin Castle, the League of Ireland. They're doing a photo shoot there, and there it is. Here's the outway of the castle, and what it looks like. Wow, did I make a mistake there? Well, first, I'm gonna get some money here, but just down the road here, that was actually the back entrance of the restaurant. So, we're gonna walk up here, and there's the front of it. There, topped off the Federal Reserves, as Harold says, and just walking down this street. And there you can see the uh, sign. So the place where I walked down the alleyway, that was actually the back door of it. So no wonder it looked a little funny. And it makes more sense because it looks similar to... So there it is. And then we'll just take a picture what it is. There we go. Let's take a look. So, it opens at 1 o'clock, and there's the menu. It's very similar to the one that must be owned in the same place. It looks exactly like the same menu. So, it seems like it's open. Hi. I was lost. I thought it was in the back alley. I said, this can't be right, because the back where the... Uh, 
the kitchen is. That's the deal you saw. Yeah, I was just saying the same because I was looking on the internet and I couldn't find it. So. That's fine. There's photo of Yeah. Is it okay if I vlog and That's fine. YouTube will be up to you. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Very good. I'm going to Nepal in uh, September. Oh, okay. I'm going to go for September a month. It's like very good month to go. Yeah. I'm actually I'm from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, yeah. But my colleagues are like from the Nepal, so they know. So. Yeah, so no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eventually go to Sri Lanka too. I just wanted to, I'm going to start off in Nepal this year. And then I want to go to like some place in India too. I want to go to uh, like basically a lot of the Asian countries and out of Pakistan. I want to go to Iran and just see the areas. So now I noticed on the menu that you didn't have like doll bat in that, eh? Uh, actually, we can make for you. Let yeah. me check with the chef. See if you, yeah, because I wanted Dalbat, to have like right? doll bat and uh, yeah. um, I know you had momos there, so maybe one of each or something. So, yeah, sure. Momos we have in the menu. Yeah. Right? So number 13 is, number 12 is momo. Yeah. So I will ask the Ask if you did all that. Sure, yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. Thanks. Here's what it looks like. It's very good. Who was deceiving? So I was at the back door. So that was their delivery door. So it's not it's not where they would actually you'd actually get. So uh, it's actually not in the menu. No. But I can give off for you. Okay. One talbat. One talbat. And any starters? Um, how big is the momo? Because I know it says it's for it's two like people. Sharing for two people, like if you're having as a main course, it's okay. Like. How many pieces is it? It's 10 pieces. 10 pieces? No, I'll take the talbat as well. Uh, talbat with the momos. And uh, do you have Coke Zero or Diet Coke? Diet Coke, yeah. Diet Coke. Gave some little starters, some little dips with some water. Quite a bit. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, this is coming to We got the Daobat special request. So this is not on the menu, but they made it for me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's try a bit of this. A bit of this. Some dalbat. Mm. And the momos are on the way too. So now he just brought me over my uh, momos. And he asked me how it was going so far, and I have to say, very, very good, very tasty. So, let's give a shot to the old momos. So, I'll replace this, put the sauce on it. And, give a shot, it's probably going to be hot. Mm. Very good. Uh -huh. Ten momos there. Then the dal that. That's the water and the coke. What better way to celebrate two years cancer free? So that was the meal done. Here's the restaurant again. Kathmandu Kitchen. Very good. Now they made me the dal bat special and the momos and then I had way too much. Like I took, I could only eat five of the momos. I'd taken them with me and uh, with some rice from the dal bat. That was very, very good, tasty. So now we're gonna make our way towards the bus station and try to find our way back. So for the Coke, the Diet Coke, the dal bat and the 10 momos, it was, 42 euros I gave them 50 euros for it so to give you a concept when you're in Nepal momos you can get the size a size of 10 for about 100 110 rupees and this and the dal bat maybe 100 rupees 150 rupees which would be about three four euros for the whole meal so obviously very more economical if you make your way to uh, Nepal you just have the uh, 1200 euro flight to contend with. But once you get there, it's for it. It's very reasonable. But, but I was really, really impressed with the meal. And now we just have to make our way back towards the old bus station. <laughs>